For a final time, welcome to Live at Roland Garros as the King of Clay continues his dominance at Roland Garros, crowned champion for a 13th time, winning match number 100 on the Parisian clay and equaling Roger Federer's record of 20 Grand Slam singles title. Your 2020 Roland Garros champion, Rafa Nadal. I'm very happy to say that for our final show this year, I'm joined by Fabrice Santoro, Daniela Hanzakova and Daniela Wow, of, of, of all the permutations of all the predictions, Raf Nadal does not drop a set all the way to the title. I think that's the general world going around the side, just wow. I think after the first two sets, we were all looking at each other like, <laughs> what's going on? Because of all the predictions and scenarios, this was the one that I don't think anyone could have expected. And I mean... This is why Rafa is the king of uh, this tournament, of this court, of this surface. And uh, he's the man that his results will never, ever be broken in our history of sport. Fabrice, it was quite incredible. Completely crazy. I mean, I, I and agree with Daniela, of course. I mean, I never thought this scenario will be possible today. Uh, we have two great champions, the world number one against the... Uh, the king of Roland Garros. I, I was waiting for a long match. I was waiting for maybe um, something different. But this one, I, I never imagined it would be possible. It's the fourth time he's won this particular title without dropping a set. It's a crazy. I mean, when you look at every stat of Rafael in Roland Garros, everything is crazy. 100 wins, two defeats in, uh, in, in 15 years. And, um, and his victory today is coming uh, first final in Roland Garros indoor. We thought that uh, playing indoor would be better for Novak, and at the end, no. Don't you think he should just keep the trophy, and whenever he decides to retire, he just returns it back to the That's club? That's a good idea, you know. <laughs> I think <laughs> we have to normally, ask someone you know. else about that. <laughs> yeah, but he, he, of course, you always get the replica, but, you know, why waste the time? <laughs> I mean, maybe because they've heard what you do with replica trophies and put fruit in it, and <laughs> they, don't, they don't want Nadal putting fruit in that trophy that he's lifted now. 13 times. I was hoping we would have gotten through the tournament without <laughs> mentioning that <laughs> again. But yeah, what a moment for Rafa. And it's just so beautiful how gracious he is in his speech and humbled. And uh, given everything that's happening in the world, uh, how much he appreciates it even more. And obviously giving the credit to his opponent, to his opponent's team. And this is why he's loved everywhere he goes and uh, respected by every single person in this world. Fabrice, how did you find him when you spoke to him in the immediate aftermath of winning the title? I would say more emotional than ever um, regarding the situation in the world mm -hmm. uh, because his victory is, of course, very big for him. But uh, what's going around the world is, uh, is very sensitive to that. And when I ask him about his record, about his performance today against the world number one, he was already somewhere else. He was thinking he's, well, he's, he's very worried um, regarding what's going on in the world. He's a very, very humble man, despite what he's achieved and continues to achieve in this sport. Right, let's get stuck into the match highlights. If for any reason you missed any of this, and you might have done, because it didn't last as long as any of us thought it would, he got off to a fantastic start, Nadal. Yeah, and I think a lot of the people would have missed maybe the beginning, just thinking, you know, this is going to last four or five hours, so they can easily still have the afternoon coffee with the cake and uh, be somewhere in the middle of the second set. But the opposite uh, was the case. Uh, I think I uh, think Rafa tactically played the best match. I don't know what you think, Fabrice, but it looked like Novak was uh, quite surprised that he was expecting completely different things happening out there. And Rafa said yesterday that, yes, he has to be aggressive, but I did not think he would be able to be this aggressive against Novak. Well, six, only six unforced errors for Rafa in the first two sets. When you know how he hit the ball, how hard he hit the ball, it's almost impossible. I don't know. I don't know. I mean... That's very impressive, and uh, so many uh, so many games where uh, Novak had chances, mm. but uh, Rafa was too good, and so many balls close to the line, always going on uh, on Rafa's side. Yeah, we we saw uh, Novak actually sometimes, you know, almost uh, uh, laughing because he couldn't believe how close Rafa was hitting everything uh, to the lines, and 
any opportunity he had, he just took it right away. So even though, you know, the first two sets were 6 love 6-2, it's not like it was a 20-minute uh, set. So Novak had his chances as well, but uh, Rafa just uh, was staying uh, on top of Novak. And uh, yes, those six unforced errors, two sets, and 14 in total in the Grand Slam final. I mean, <laughs> what do you do? That's where I think Novak did such a good je job just holding it together uh, mentally and, you know, kept fighting and almost in the third set he was then later able to turn it around. I think from a Djokovic point of view as we were going through these early games and we're thinking well is there something wrong with him is it just a level of Nadal it was the fact there was no reaction or emotion from Novak Djokovic until the third set. Exactly until the third set when he broke back and at this moment I said oh maybe we're going uh, in a very long final going to four or five set but uh, no, finally, uh, it, it, all, all the match went on uh, Rafa's side. I mean, once again, as uh, Daniela said, very impressive. No mistakes during during the whole match. Uh, that's that's something uh, I, I'm, I've never seen before. I mean, well, one thing I would have thought that Novak was going to change in that second set was maybe to serve and volley more because Rafa was standing almost half meter farther than mm. where he's normally returning and. Uh, Maybe something, but it's obviously easier to see it uh, from outside the court than when you are on the court. That uh, Rafa didn't feel like he was that much pressured when he was hitting his returns. And uh, then with the first shot af after the return, he was able to just dictate right away. And um, to me, I don't know what you guys think, but maybe that match against Stefanos Tsitsipas took a lot out of Novak physically. That uh, with his feet, he was not as sharp as we normally used to, or was it just Rafa playing so so well and so aggressive? Rafa played clearly one of the best matches of his career in, in a big moment, which is, uh, we are used to, that, to see that. And Nav Novak was uh, maybe, maybe a bit flat. Um, but also during the, during the warm-up this morning on court number two, when we went there, he was a bit worried about his ball toss. He was talking a lot. He was, um, he was not in a, in a great mood, actually. It's just the way that Nadal was reading everything from Djokovic, wrong foot, as you say, keeping him off balance, the world number one, looking ungainly at times, and the drop shots of Djokovic, how quick Nadal was up to those and was managing to, to turn it back in his favour. Yeah, it was the one wrong foot footing that uh, Rafa did so well today. And I mean, how difficult that must be to surprise tactically someone that you have played more than 50 times. So that's where uh, Carlos Moya and the rest of the team did such a good job. And uh, to me then, uh, Novak started to be a little bit impatient sometimes, trying to finish up the points uh, quicker than normal probably because uh, tactically I think just Rafa was uh, having all the answers out there. There's one of many drop shots that <laughs> Novak Djokovic played. Again and again tried to drink, bring Rafa Nadal in. He was able to cope with it. But as Nadal's confidence grew, you found Novak Djokovic still trying to work away past a man who he was facing for a 56th time. He was trying to find solutions, and it was um, impossible today. I mean, um, I remember when Rafa came to Paris uh, almost three weeks ago, he said that uh, the court looks different, that uh, the roof is something he has to deal with, he has to change his hotel also regarding the bubble. Uh, he thought that uh, new balls were not um, good for his game. Uh, the court was too humid, too, too, <laughs> too slow, and at the end, didn't lose the set. And he was cold. <laughs> well, that's where, <laughs> you know, the great champions adjust. And I think uh, Rafa, more than anyone throughout this tournament, yes, maybe at the beginning uh, of it, we were worried whether, you know, all these uh, things that you just mentioned, Fabrice, were going to affect how he was uh, being able to play out there and felt like he was getting better and better with every match. And that's the incredible quality of the champions, that they might be playing one way in the first round of a tournament and then at the end 14 days 15 days later they are suddenly on a completely different level they just stand um, at the top when they need that's that's yep. why they are so impressive because you don't need to play uh, the match of your life in, in a first or second round but uh, on, in, a, in a final against a world number one you know that if you don't play your best tennis you will lose and uh, Rafa was able to uh, to play, uh, to play uh, his best level today. Well, you don't need to play the best match of your life unless you are Iga Swiatek and you do it from the first round till, yes, uh, right. the, till the, the finals. That's what happened on the women's side. But going back to the guys, yes, we can be talking about what Nova could have done better today. But, you know, honestly, when Rafa plays like this, this uh, I don't think there's anything to do. Nothing to do.
No, it's, it's quite incredible how he was playing. And then some people said, look, he hasn't dropped a set. Maybe he hasn't been tested as he should have been. And now he's got Novak Djokovic. It didn't make any difference. The way he played from the very first ball, targeting that backhand of Djokovic. It, if there was a problem with the left arm or the elbow, Nadal was going to try and draw some errors from that side. Yeah, exactly. And in the third set, we I think everyone started to feel like, oh, OK, this is where Novak is coming back. It's It started to be really tight. But to me how Rafa was able to just raise his level even higher and, uh, you know, towards the end, we have to think about it. Uh, last, he, Novak hasn't really faced a match point down this year. And You're Rafa right. Right. being able to come on top in straight sets, uh, that's just incredible. But it was in this third set when, Fabrice, we spoke about this earlier, it was when we finally saw Djokovic. We heard the roar. He was fist pumping. He was looking up to his box. And I think all of us at that point thought, this is it. Possibly still a long way to go, but Djokovic is here. Yes, I mean, he was trying to be positive even with two sets uh, to love down. And uh, at this moment, I thought, maybe uh, Novak Djokovic is the only one in the world who can make, win two or three sets in a row against Rafa and Clay. I mean, he's, he's the one, he did it in, a, in, in the past, but, um, but at the end of the third, Rafa broke again and uh, finally uh, closed the match. But, you know, when um, Novak broke back in the third set, you, we were all thinking, yes, if there is one player that is able to change this match around, it's Novak. And I believe if Rafa would have dropped his level a little bit, we would be like looking at sure, fourth sure. and potentially five, fifth set. That's how strong uh, Novak is mentally. And he can, you know, come out of now, nowhere being able to do that, but not today. And that, I love that celebration. It was not, I would have thought that celebration was not as emotional as the previous years, but then with the speech and everything that happened during the ceremony, it was incredible to watch. I think he doesn't want to go for too much regarding the celebration yeah. because of the situation in the world. And uh, once again, he has, uh, he's so humble, he has such, uh, such a, a great education and uh, he's a great man. So um, he, was, uh, he was very happy, but he doesn't want to go for, for too much. He looked like a child as he grabbed his shirt and started biting it between clenched fists. I don't know what you guys thought, but to me, and we're going to see it later, to me he looked like uh, such a sweet uh, little boy when he was sitting down with the trophy, actually, <laughs> after the ceremony, just at the edge, uh, just his uh, legs hanging in the air, and uh, that smile has not changed ever since he entered the Roland Garros for the first time many years ago. And Fabrice, it was the perfect way to win this title mm -hmm. with the ace out wide. With the ace and the position after the match point, I look at this picture, I mean, how? What a good way to celebrate. And uh, the team, of course, Carlos Moya, Francisco Roig, and uh, uh, maybe one third of his team regarding the previous years, but still uh, they're very important people in his box. And the smile on the face. The frown is there, the furrowed brow through the points, through the matches, playing everything down. But finally now, Daniela, he is crown champion for the 13th time here. No, it's just, just incredible. And I think we are all so lucky to witness this uh, history in making. And uh, honestly, I feel like he still has many Roland Garros titles left in him because uh, with <laughs> Rafa on clay in Paris, it's really, it's going to be on his terms. When he decides to leave one day and retire, I think that's when we can start you know, thinking about uh, all the numbers and everything other than that. But as, as long as Rafa is around the tournament, he all obviously is always going to be the biggest uh, possible um, player to, to win the title. Yeah, you feel he's red hot favorite for when Roland Garros rolls around in around seven months from now. So we've seen how Rafa Nadal won title number 13. Now let's hear from the man himself. Uh, bonjour a tout. Uh, yeah, first of all, of course, um, Congrats to Novak for another great tournament. Sorry for for today. Uh, you know, <laughs> in Australia he killed me uh, a couple of times ago. Uh, clear today was for me. That's that's part of the of the game. Now we played plenty of times uh, together. Uh, one day uh, wins once, another day wins the other. Now so just uh, all the best for the for the future, Novak. Well, I think. Uh, of course, uh, everyone. Uh, I think um, after all the things that I went through during all my, my career uh, in terms of injuries, uh, w without a great team and family around me, uh, everything will be impossible now. So, yeah, I just can say thank you very, very much. All the team who is here and family and all the family and the rest of the team that is 
they are at, at home, they couldn't came for, the, for this uh, very, very tough situation. No? And at the same time, uh, I want to send a message to uh, everyone around the world. No? Uh, we are facing uh, one of the worst moments that uh, I think we remember in, in this world, uh, facing and fighting against this uh, virus. Uh, just uh, keep going, stay positive, and uh, all the very best together, probably. We will go through this and we will win the virus soon. I want to say a huge congratulations to Rafa uh, and, and your team and your family, of course. Uh, what you're doing on this court is unbelievable, not just this court. Throughout your in entire career, you've been a great champion. And today you show, you show why you're king of the clay. I have experienced it on my own skin. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a very tough match for me today. Obviously, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, not so pleased with the way I played, but, uh, you know, I was uh, definitely overplayed by a better player today on the court. And, you know, it's been a fantastic couple of weeks. Um, you know, obviously, the situation is very difficult for everyone worldwide, but we have a possibility. To, to play the sport that we love, and uh, I'm very grateful to everyone who made, made sure that this tournament is organized and to allow us to actually be on the court. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Novak Djokovic and Rafa Nadal speaking on court moments after the match and the title was won. So 13 Roland Garros titles for Rafa Nadal, 100 match wins on the Parisian clay and also equaling Roger Federer's Grand Slam singles tally of 20 Grand Slam singles titles. And very shortly, Daniela, Roger Federer posted this message to his good friend on Instagram. Yeah, it's uh, so beautiful to see how much respect uh, Roger has for Rafa and uh, probably he, he must be thinking, are you kidding me? Now I have to practice again <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, start uh, all over again. So I wouldn't be surprised if Roger is out there uh, hitting balls tomorrow morning. And uh, this is uh, why it's so good for our sport, because these three guys, they just keep pushing each other. And uh, I believe that, you know, they are better and better because of each other. If, uh, you know, th there was not one or the other, I don't think we would be looking at this. So it's, it's so cool to see to how they are making history in our sport. Yes, 57 Grand Slam titles altogether and uh, probably some more uh, in the future. Now, we'd like to bring you reaction to the action. So Eli is out and about trying to speak to those who have been watching the action. And first up for us, we can hear from Eli with Cedric Pierlin. OK, guys, I'm with Cedric Pierlin. Uh, very lucky to... Cedric, how do you explain this match? It's amazing. Nobody was expecting a match like this. Ah. Uh. No, I didn't expect it. I was uh, kind of surprised to see like the scenario. I mean, uh, the beginning of a match is always important in that kind of matches. And uh, I think Nadal was stronger. And then, uh, you know, running after the score, it's so difficult. But still, I mean, like six love, six two, three two break. Uh, so I'm, I don't know. I mean, uh, but I think. Nadal played incredible. I mean, he played, uh, I mean, the first two sets, like something like uh, seven and four zeros, which is amazing. I mean, the way he was playing is, no, like, unbelievable. Novak looked nervous, looked tense. He looked, uh, the, the, the event seemed to be taking, getting the best of him. Yeah, I don't know. I think he, he, it was hard for him to, to find his rhythm. Uh, he was like on, on, kind of on off, you know, like playing good and then like doing mistakes, unusual mistakes. And, uh, and uh, once again, it's difficult to run after a score, especially in the final against Rafa. Okay, thank you very much. Back to you guys, back to you, Gigi. Thank you very much, Eli. And I think anyone we speak to or you speak to about this is going to start with, well, wow, it was just simply incredible trying to find the words to describe that performance. The word of the day is wow. <laughs> um, because, because I imagine many different scenarios. Uh, five sets, Novak, mm -hmm. maybe quick, quick match or four. But never I thought uh, this uh, two hours and 41 minutes only in straight set victory of Rafa. I never thought uh, this will happen. And that's, I think, exactly the same from everyone. The start from Rafa Novak, you kept thinking it's not going to continue like this. It will level out at some point. And it didn't. He kept that level. He kept that momentum. Well, not only he kept it, Gigi, but towards the end of the match, he was even able to raise it when Novak was coming back. And it 
almost looked like he was going to uh, turn things around. That's where normally, you know, uh, serving for a Grand Slam title, you might get tired, you might get emotional, but Rafa had no time for that because that's when Novak was starting to play incredibly well. And I believe 100% if Rafa dropped a little bit the level, um, we would be looking at a completely different scenario. And, but this is to me that sweet moment because when you look at that smile, it's just exactly, um, you know, those 13 ties, uh, titles ago that he had the same smile on. He's just cuddling the trophy, <laughs> isn't he? So, so sweet. A trophy he knows better than anybody. <laughs> it must be so good to be in this position once in your life. <laughs> but when you have been 13 times on the same court, he's the only one we can talk about it. <laughs> we heard a short while ago from Cedric Peeling. Now, Eli is keeping busy, and here he is with Sebastian Grosjean. Okay, we're, with, we're very lucky to be with Sebastian, Sebastian Grosjean. Um, 20 Grand Slams. Rafa Nadal has 20 Grand Slams. Yeah. It's an amazing day. It's amazing. 13 French Open, Roland Garros, uh, 20 Grand Slams in total. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Uh, everything started uh, 15 years ago for, for Rafa and be able to win uh, another uh, Roland Garros 15 years later and uh, to equal uh, Roger, uh, you know, uh, recall it's, uh, it's amazing, amazing. And uh, I mean, congrats to, uh, to Rafa. Was it a case of Rafa being too good today or Novak not bringing his best game to the table? Uh, I think it's uh, both, both of them. I mean, uh, Rafa st starts so strong, put so much intensity uh, on his shots and physically. And, uh, and, and tactically, I think he, he played the right way also, you know, like being close to the line, even if he was in a def defensive situation. And it was tough uh, for Novak. I mean, he was... Uh, uh, he was the same uh, on the other way, like uh, a year ago in Australia when uh, Novak win, uh, won in, in three sets. But, uh, I mean, those guys are, are amazing. And uh, the way Rafa played from the first to the last, I mean, it's uh, sensational. Okay, thank you very much. Back thank to you me. guys. Back to you guys. Thank you. Mike. Merci beaucoup. Now, another final that took place today on Philippe Chatry was the women's doubles final, and it involved the defending champions. They're the second seed at this year's tournament, Tamir Babosh and Kristina Mladenovic. They were up against the 14th seed, looking to become the first women's team to successfully defend their Roland Garros doubles title since 2009, and Daniela, they successfully defended it. Yeah, and it's so good to see them doing so well. I think they are so good for women's tennis, and uh, to me, they're the best team out there and really deserve to defend uh, their trophy, especially after everything that uh, happened to Kiki in New York. So good to see them doing so well together. Fourth major title as a team, a fifth for Kristina Mlenovic and a fourth for Tamir Babosh. Wonderful performance. I mean, uh, I mean uh, of course, I'm... Uh, Happy for, uh, for the French tennis to see a, a Grand Slam champion. Christina lost in the first one uh, singles against uh, Sigmund. And uh, two weeks later, she was able to, uh, to win the trophy in doubles. So congrats. And as Danny said, everything that took place in the US Open bubble, it must have been exhausting mentally and physically. So to be able to come here in front of a smattering of your home crowd and defend your title. You're right, you're right, Gigi. I mean, uh, the situation in, uh, on the tour at the moment is very special. So some, some player gets uh, tired very, very quickly. And uh, I, I talked to a couple of uh, players uh, in the last few weeks. It's a, it's a very, very special organization. So everything that we're doing in, on uh, day after day is, uh, has been changed the last, uh, the last two months. But um, we have no choice. So congratulations to Tamir Babosh and Christina Mladenovic. They are the second seeds and they've successfully defended their Roland Garros title. Now, yesterday, you might remember that 19-year-old Iga Sviontek won her first tour title. It just happened to be the Roland Garros title. And she did it a little bit like Rafa Nadal, who she looks up to without dropping a set. Well, earlier today in the heart of Paris, she spoke to us about coming to terms with what she's achieved. Lovely. Yeah, congratulations, Roland Garros champion. Has it sunken in yet? How do you reflect on the magic of yesterday? Um, it was pretty hard because I'm still, um, I still have a lot of emotions, and it was hard to look from another perspective on this whole tournament. So I think I'm gonna need to uh, have some more time to just um, like get my thoughts straight and just. Um, see it, see the whole two weeks from from a distance. So um, yeah, right now I'm just I'm still uh, I'm still happy and uh, 
I'm, I'm still kind of shocked. And um, uh, right now I'm, I'm going to have a lot of responsibilities which are going to be new for me. So, um, yeah, it's a new experience and uh, I still have some, <laughs> some things to learn. Um, so I'm just going to enjoy the moment and, yeah. There are loads of messages popping in on social media congratulating you from Djokovic, Osaka, Billie Jean King, Lewandowski. What, that, what does that kind of praise mean to you? Um, well, it's a lot. Um, I know that uh, it's a weird feeling having so many popular people behind you and uh, still um, I feel like um, I'm not really a celebrity so it's also overwhelming for me to get messages from people like that but uh, it's, it's it's nice that I have support and also I feel like the whole Poland, um, my, my country was behind me the whole tournament and they were believing in me so I believed in me and uh, it was just amazing and I'm really thankful for the the whole, for my fans and, and for the people. You've had a dream two weeks here, obviously your first Grand Slam but what's been the real highlight for you? Um, I think winning against Simona Halep was the match that I um, that I'm going to remember the most and obviously the final and the trophy ceremony but uh, I think on the quarter final I finally um, I finally realized that I can play my best tennis even under pressure and during the whole tournament I've made like a huge progress and I was catching confidence on every match so um, at the end I just felt that I can win with everyone and it was also new for me and amazing. Thank you so much, congratulations. Thank you. Incredible achievement, and I believe she was also going to make her way back here to Philippe Chatre to watch Rafa Nadal in his final. Right, it's time to rejoin Eli. Good evening, Eli. Hi, guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm on center court. I'm in court for Philippe Chatrier. Amazing. Uh, this is where history has been made, and uh, we are waiting for Carlos Moya to hopefully come and say a few words to us. Uh, the whole, uh, if Severin can pan around to show you uh, right here in front of you is Rafa's dad, his agent, Carlos Costa. Uh, they're all... Uh, there's going to be a group picture. I think the whole family is coming. There's, uh, I want to do a little souvenir moment here on the court, Philippe Chatrier. We've been, we've been running around with doing our fair share of hunting and uh, avoiding and making it through, but we're here. And if everything is, goes to plan, um, Carlos Moya should be coming through this door in about, I'd say a minute, maybe 30 seconds. I don't know. We're Listen, we're going to stay right here. We're not going to move. And the second he comes, I'll reach out to you guys and uh, interrupt you if that's okay. No, you can, you can interrupt us any day. It felt like you were whispering again, Eli. I'm not sure why you're whispering now. Is it just because it's, it's our final show together? No, <laughs> it's just it's a habit. The second oh. I'm out here, I start whispering. I don't know why. <laughs> Plus, I mean, there are people around me. I don't want to make a, you know, a huge show. We have Mrs. Nadal coming out on court now. And uh, the sister and, yeah, mom is coming out. It's, it's definitely... Uh, a family moment here, and we're just waiting for Rafa. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, what am I supposed to do? I have to say hello, right? No, you Are do. you going to jump into the family picture now? Yeah. Are you no, part of the picture? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to photobomb this picture in a big the way. Uh, okay, well, he's still not here. He should be arriving soon. I will just, guys, hang on. I'll okay. let you know as soon as he yeah. comes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. If, he, if anyone can, Eli can. Right, we'll be back with you. Stay away from the family photo. I think Eli's hoping to grab a word with Carlos Moya after the photo has been taken. But if I can just take us back briefly to Iga Sviantek, something you said while we were listening to that is she seems like such a, a humble young lady. Humbled and very bright and smart. And I think that's why you have the feeling she's going to be around for a very long time. And this is just the beginning of many, I think, Grand Slam trophies to come. She really thinks about her answers, even though, you know, they're still, still very pure and emotional, which is so nice to see. She's not afraid to hide any of her feelings. And uh, it's been such an incredible journey to follow her. Uh, and as she said herself, that win against Simona Halep, I think, completely changed the momentum of the tournament. And that's when we really started to pay so much more attention to her and we will be for the next couple of years and understandably for she said it is still sinking in what she's achieved here i think um, maybe in two three days when she will be at home uh, with her family she will uh, she will be more conscious what, what happened in paris what she did uh, and uh, and she she said also what very interesting my my life has changed the last few days so i will have to learn and to adapt to this new uh, new life i'm a 
it's going to be a, a she's already a star now and uh, everything has changed so quickly also the word uh, i like that she mentioned is responsibilities because now she suddenly she becomes the idol of many young players especially in poland out there and she's already aware of that fact so i think that's why women's tennis it's in such a good hands having a champion like iga Sviatek. She's just 19 years of age, and there was that moment where she could not believe what she'd done. Exactly, I mean, I love this picture because, as you said, uh, oh, let's stay maybe on the on the live with uh, Carlos Moya just uh, arrived on uh, court. Right, Philippe Chatrier. Carlos, for one minute so congratulations, we can speak to Eli. Uh, you, Carlos, congratulations! You must be over the moon. Yeah, very pleased the way this tournament uh, has been for Rafa and talking about today it's been an amazing match for him he played unbelievable very focused knowing a very a lot of determination and knowing what to do all the time and I think he he did unbelievable all the tennis specialists all around the world were expecting a huge battle and Rafa just dominated this match from the first almost to the last point how do we explain that this the way this match turned out well uh, you never know of course we had a plan probably we had this kind of plan many other times and it didn't work today he he was feeling the ball very special since the morning and the warm-up and he's been playing very well this uh, the last couple of weeks so he was very confident that he could execute that that plan feeling confident and for two sets and a half it's been unbelievable then Novak uh, also played better uh, he got a little bit nervous and it's been a very tough battle uh, this third set but overall we have to be very pleased the way Rafa has played and finally, uh, Rafa is now equal to Roger Federer with 20 Grand Slams. I mean, when is this madness going to stop? Well, uh, we will try to enjoy this, uh, this Roland Garros. We never talk about this 20 tournament or 13. We, this is just a Grand Slam. We try to enjoy it and it's going to be time to talk about it when they both uh, retire, even Novak, when, because he's also uh, very close. So when they retire, people will talk about it. For us, it's, that's not a big deal. Anyways, congratulations Thank and you. enjoy the celebrations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that was it. We we got we got him, guys. We got Carlos Moya to speak to us. It was very interesting. And now behind us here, you can see it's a big, uh, it's a big reunion. The entire clan is here. Souvenir picture. Uh, yeah, with nothing else to say. But uh, congratulations to Mr. Rafael Nadal and all his team. And we might be seeing you in some of these photos tomorrow. Uh, no, uh, we're going <laughs> to, hopefully not. We're going to leave. We're going to leave. We're going to leave. We're going. We're done. We're being thrown out. <laughs> they are literally being thrown out. Literally. Eli, thank you very much. Eli. And it's really nice to see those images of Nadal and his family just cuddling his sister there. Just the, the genuine joy on their faces. And it's just so cool to finish, you know, Eli's speech on those scenes because deservedly so that is Rafa court so when they say it's time for Rafa to be on the court we better all listen <laughs> yeah. anyone ar around the tournament because uh, there's definitely I think something is going to be named after him very very you're, soon you're right Anna. it's like uh, leave me home I'm, yes, I'm at home, home. Alone. <laughs> yeah close the door I'm at home yes it is isn't it <laughs> it's, it's so he's just court. gonna stay here now for the next seven months <laughs> keep the trophy right <laughs> set up camp and then we'll yeah. just come back here in seven months and, he, and he'll go off again but as Carlos Moisa I thought it's quite interesting we don't talk about number 20 and we don't talk mm. about number 13 because some players make it very obvious of a number what they want to achieve and I genuinely believe him when he says that they don't focus or talk about the numbers yeah and I believe that is the reason why he is at number 13 and number 20 as far as overall Grand Slam goes because he doesn't think about it he's just focusing on the work on the process and then the results it's the it's the second effect of what they are trying to achieve out there I guess they always have pressure on their shoulders, but there's a little less pressure. Serena Williams, for instance, every time, 24, 24, when's 24, when's 24? And she said, I want 24. Yes, of course she, of course she wants, and of course it's a lot of pressure for all these champions, but uh, they are born, I mean, to, to, be, uh, to be such a great champion. And, uh, you know, Rafa had al already a lot of pressure when he, he played his uh, sixth final in Paris. I mean, winning six, it's a lot of pressure, and then, and then eight, 10, 12, and today 13, I mean, it's, I mean, I have no word for that. I never thought it would be, it will happen one day. Yeah, but don't you think it's because he never ever genuinely, when you hear Carlos or Rafa talking about it, they do not think about it. You know, some players like Serena, she needs that motivation. She needs to be thinking about number 24. But it, Rafa, honestly, whether he loses first round or wins the, the tournament, with him, it's all about the work and knowing that he's done everything that he possibly can to, to win the matches. Yes, of course. But, you know, I remember when he won his six or seven title in Paris, I was with France TV crew here and we said, 
come on, he will never win 10 French Open. It's not possible. Never will win 10. Do we think 20? But we said, who's favorite next year? <laughs> Rafa. And then he did it. And now it's 13. And who's going to be favorite in seven months? I just asked, do we think 20? No. That's seven years. Well, no. at six, you didn't think 13. But, I mean, when we think about it, he's 34 and he looked so fresh he out did. there. I mean, we remember how we felt out there when <laughs> we were 34. So I don't yeah. know where he gets the energy from. And... Um, well, maybe seven, it's too much, but at least two, three titles more. Yeah. If it's 13, it will be 13 more than me. If it's 15, it will be 15 <laughs> more than me. Same for me. <laughs> oh, dear. We're ending on a nice positive, aren't we, in the studio? We are going to go. And Eli was thrown off Philippe Chatry very nicely, just ushered to the side. Eli, where have you got to? Well, uh, now we're standing right in the middle. Court Philippe Chatrier behind me, this beautiful view that we've been looking at for the past two and a half weeks, almost three weeks for a lot of us. Uh, it's been a, a pleasure, a privilege, and an honor to be here at this very special tournament. Uh, it's my, I, I'm, I'm beating Rafael Nadal, it's my 22nd Roland Garros, but this one was very, very special for so many reasons that everybody understands, so thank you very much, everyone, for uh, all the help, everybody who's been working in the shade, behind, the, behind closed doors, making this show possible. I'm not going to name everybody. I forgot to name Michelle last year, so Michelle, what's up? And uh, thank you guys, Gigi, Daniela, Fabrice, Severine, Merci. who's holding that camera. Yeah, no, thank you very much, Eli. And we echo, Eli, thank you to everyone who works behind the scenes to get us to this position every day, 17 shows in 15 days. And we couldn't have done it without everybody working together to bring this show together. It's been wonderful to have Fabrice with us for the first time. Have Merci. you enjoyed it? Merci, Gigi. Merci, Daniela. It was such a pleasure and honor to be with you. I really enjoy it. You really enjoyed it? Yes. Okay, I like that. And Daniela, it's been a pleasure once again to be with you for the 17 shows. Yeah, I can't believe how fast they do and by and it, it's been privileged, so much fun to work with you guys and with the entire team and uh, I think we've been really lucky and blessed to be able to witness this all in live action and that the Roland Garo got through uh, thanks to the organizers and also I think we have to give so much credit to the players and teams being so disciplined yeah. and being able to get through the tournament with uh, zero K it just shows uh, how strong our sport is. It's been an absolute pleasure. Fabrice, Daniel, Merci. thank you very, very much. Congratulations to Igor Sviantek and Raf Nadal. And again, to everyone who brings this show to life every day for those 15 days. Now, we are going to leave you fittingly with the King of Clay. Not only was it his 13th Roland Garros title that he won today, it was also his 100th match win on the Parisian clay. Raf Nadal, until next time. feeling that I have here is uh, impossible to compare to another feeling. The most important event in my career without a doubt, so win again here is something that I cannot describe. <laughs>